everyone. Good morning. Uh, the 1M giveaway is now in full swing. Uh, I'm uh, about halfway through my Brembo install. I cheated on you this time. Uh, normally what I do is show you the fumble through side uh, and then finish up uh, the project and then show you that I do have a little bit of mechanical prowess, uh, a tiny bit. Uh, well, I'm cheating on you today because I already did the passenger side. Uh, so I did half the car already. Uh, I just didn't, just wasn't feeling the camera uh, yesterday. And so I did this side. Uh, Mike did the brakes on my M3. Uh, and so I'm doing the brakes on the 1M. I didn't really watch Mike and Bryce edited the video. Uh, so I went back and watched Mike's video uh, where he did the brakes and I basically did the, uh, you know, the pumping of them. Uh, but uh, generally speaking, I, uh, I didn't do a whole heck of a lot on the M3, so I had to, um, having to figure out how to do this one myself. It's, it's pretty easy. Uh, but there's a couple of little fumble moments that uh, took, took a little extra time that now will take about half the time. Uh, so it's going to look a lot easier here as I do the driver's side. So what we have are Brembo 380, 365, so 380 millimeters is the is the um the diameter at 365 is the diameter of the of the rears uh six piston you know so for those of you who don't know this if you look inside here there's one two three four five six pistons uh, as opposed to most cars will have a single piston uh, or maybe dual piston uh, so the fronts are a six piston these are these these are actually about a pound lighter than stock uh, but then these are about four pounds heavier than stock because they're much thicker much more stout uh, a little bit bigger than than the stock size i don't know what the stock size is but we are certainly gaining some some overall braking size and uh and then hopefully stopping power uh, but the beauty of these brakes is they drive so nicely they're just like stock uh, but nasty when you want them to be. So that's the front setup. And then the rear is a four piston. So I can't see behind the pad here, but so there's one, you can even see the, the drum here. So one, two, three, four. Uh, so that's our rear four piston caliper and then the 365. So the kits come complete, bolts right up, no modification with the exception of we have to cut the the little dust section or the i need to figure out what, what is it called the uh, uh the dust guard or the brake dust guard behind the rotor uh, so in the rear we have to bend it back uh in the front we have to have to leave, we leave it alone but we have to cut both front and rear and i'll show you that uh, the kit also comes with uh stainless brake lines so there's the front brake line uh, and then the little uh, nut that goes into the back of the caliper here. So it goes in, into this section. We'll show you how that mounts. And then the rear, a little bit shorter line, shorter distance. Uh, the brake lines are different front to rear, so you need to make sure you keep those separate. So then it comes with a, an adapter to bolt, to bolt in. So, and then we have uh, mounting hardware. So the the actual mounting, so uh, this is the front bracket. The front bracket, uh, it actually mounts, I guess from you, from your perspective, this way. Uh, so we use the factory hardware, the factory bolts to bolt the mounting hardware, and then that and connects, because it'll be hard to show you this. That bolts up, so that's the bracket that holds the caliper in place. So those pieces will, will connect there. Same thing in the rear. And then these uh, bolts run through the back of the caliper and connect to our to our mounting mounting plates, which are aluminum. Same thing in the rear. It's a little different look, but uh, when you get the kit, one thing I would suggest if you're doing this, make sure you leave the stickers on there. I took them off, and then I had to go out and look at my M3 uh, to figure out which rotor goes where, because these are directional. Uh, so it does matter which side they go on. You can tell by the veins, uh, but if you're not familiar with this kind of stuff, you'll be Google searching like crazy. So make sure you leave all the stickers on so you have the part numbers, so you know which side is left, which side is right, otherwise it'll get confusing. They do come with instructions, which you really don't need. You can just watch my video and 
see how it's done. It's really pretty self-explanatory. Once you start taking the factory ones apart, you'll see how these, how these go. So anyway, let's get rolling. Uh, I don't think I'll get to the bleeding today. Nobody's here. It's uh, 4th of July. Uh, and uh, so I'll probably bleed them tomorrow with my dad. Uh, and obviously that'll be in this video. Uh, but let's get the car up in the air a little higher, get the wheels off and start working on the project. All right, so I like to bring this up a little bit higher than chest height. We're gonna have to get the, uh, the twin bush oil extractor underneath this so we can catch the catch the brake fluid as it drips a little bit you know I'll be much quicker on this wheel than I was on the other so we'll be able to catch it a little easier let's make sure you're not blown out that looks good man the HREs look so good I'm also while we're at it uh, I found that there's only one spot that rubs on the car and it's because this plastic piece is a little I mean, I almost want to put a self-tapper in here, but the, my plastic piece is a little bit, sticks out a little bit on this side. So it's only rubbing on one side. Aha. So I'm gonna fix that right now. I'll show you this in a middle minute. That's why it's rubbing. And it sounds gnarly. So it's, it's like the wheels, you, you think the wheels don't fit uh, because it sounds crazy, like sounds like something's breaking. It's just, I'll show you here in a second. It's just touching this one little spot. I'm gonna fix that, but this needs to go inside. There's a little clip here, so I'll take that apart and fix that. I'm gonna put some gloves on so we can stay somewhat clean. I'd actually raise the car up and it's still rubbed. So I'm gonna bring the car back down. I already did it on the other side. I remember exactly, we did four turns. So we'll bring that back down and keep it. So I actually bought a set of Titan 7s for my M3. They wouldn't fit on this car. The offsets would be too aggressive. But I really dig, really, really dig these on the 1M. But whoever wins this car will have a choice. You could swap back to the other wheels if you wanted to. So light. Okay, so yeah, this here this needs to go, there's a little tab that sticks up. I don't, I didn't take this apart. I'm gonna take these two screws out, fix that. That'd be awesome if that rub goes away completely. So the brakes, we'll have to bed them as well. So I'm gonna try to capture a video. I'll try to put a GoPro here and show the brakes heating up, show the procedure for how I bed brakes. Only takes about 15 minutes, but then I have to go home and sleep it off because it makes me motion sick. I almost need to have somebody else. What the heck is that? See, I almost need to have somebody else uh, watch the speedometer for me. Yeah, so that has to go inside there. No wonder it's rubbing. Things are sticking out. And that should pull it back just enough. You guys have me convinced to... Uh, using to using gloves it's a much smarter smarter thing oh man that's awesome so it's rubbing right here which i just pushed it in enough that it shouldn't contact that anymore so we can definitely go down on the suspension now so let me turn that down while we're here it's always good to blow out all the dirt and dust from the suspension this is where but only in reverse never under compression so as i turning if i turned in reverse the tire would contact that there but you just saw this whole piece was sticking outside of this which pushes it back in place i don't know why i didn't notice that before so i'd actually move this up because i thought that would help with the rub i didn't realize it was only rubbing on one side because i would hear it out the driver's side window we should be okay on the alignment because it's only, it's like an eighth of an inch. I don't know, I guess you could set the perch lower on these ASTs. Cause that's not particularly low. But we do have more threading here. So I wonder if you could move the collar down. Not sure. Okay, suspension's good. So step one, so you don't mess this up. Pull out the wear indicator 
which we're gonna essentially short. So this car has a wear indicator in the front drivers and the rear passenger side. So don't let me forget that. We'll have to terminate that in a little bit. So let me pull this. This piece has to come off first. And I haven't quite figured this one out, how, to, how I even got this off in the first place. Oh yeah, that's how you do it. So you can pull that off. Okay, we bring the car up quite a bit. I'm gonna get the can underneath here. So I got that in place. So now what I did before, it's got these kind of goofy uh, stainless lines on here. Let's pull the grommet off. And then it's a 14 mil. It's a lot easier to do this when you're not messing with the darn camera. So, on most of these, I really wish Bryce was here so we could capture this. On most of this stuff, we want to use the, uh, whatever you call this thing, flare wrench, so we don't round anything off. So, because of the way I'm doing this, actually, I'm going to think of it before I even loosen this. I'm going to loosen the, uh, the back part. So there's little caps back here. Pull the little cap off. They're an 8 millimeter. Nope, 7. These shouldn't be too tight. At least they weren't on the other side. So there's two, and what that'll allow us to do is pull the, pull the brake pad holder section the caliper apart. Now, you know what's probably a better option? Yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna pull this off first and then take the brake line off. I'm really proud of this car and how it's come together. I think it really is a good example of a, a really nice driver's car. Not a collector car, but a driver's version of a 1M where you won't feel bad driving it but it's worth something I really like how it's set up I think I did a good job of setting it up so now this will come off should come off what's holding me up here the pad is holding me on I think in order to get this off I release the um piston will resume to taking this thing off. I wanted to be able to spin the rotor because I really should take the back part off first. I don't really care about these lines. I'm going to throw them away. They're real ratty looking. So I'm just going to spin it. Keep spinning it until it comes out. And they're really long. That's when I wanted to be able to take the rotor off. Or not the rotor, but the caliper off and then spin it. But that's the way I did it on the other side. And somebody's going to be yelling at me about this is not how you do it, but whatever. I'm doing it this way. So don't do it that way. And I don't know what other way to do it. I mean, the smarter way to do it would be to take it off the top there. But I'm not ready for that just because of the, the process I'm going through here. I'd rather not drain out all of the brake fluid. I can just turn this up like so and stick it somewhere where I don't lose a lot of fluid. Don't run the lines in the car dry. I'm not sure that it matters, but it's also smart to have paper towels handy. Push the caliper in or the brake pad in, squeeze out all your fluid. So that's what a single piston looks like. So I think these are single, yeah. Single piston. So we're going from one to six. It's gotta be better, right? Okay, so now I'm gonna take these two much harder to get off bolts. I'm gonna be torqued to they're probably 100, 110 foot pounds, something like that. So these are 16 mil bolts that hold the caliper bracket on. Since that initial messy step is done, 
I'm gonna swap out my gloves and do some new ones. I have some nicer ones that I bought, but I, on this project, I'm swapping out gloves so often that it makes sense to use the cheap ones. At least I got ones that fit now. These aren't 16, they're 18. <clears throat> <clears throat> Once you break it, it's pretty easy. That one was easier. Okay. So this is the caliper bracket, which we'll be swapping for the Brembo aluminum, but we're going to reuse these bolts. First things first, though, we got to take the caliper off, or the rotor off. And I'll show you here, we're gonna cut the back plate. There's the bracket, and these are the bolts. Okay, so let's take the rotor off. So we're gonna reuse these as well, so we wanna make sure they don't mess them up. I probably should have bought some new ones, but I wasn't thinking ahead. I found on other cars, you need a some sort of impact here, but on these BMWs, it's really easy to get off. It's just a much higher quality bolt and thread I found than other cars have. Let's see if it comes off. Nope. Take a mallet. That's all it took. So here's the factory. Factory one. Not a bad piece for a factory. Certainly not Porsche grade, but not bad. Okay, so now this goes like this. So I'm gonna hold this up. If you get an idea where I need to cut this, right there, and right there. Doesn't have to be exact. I really need to get a right angle grinder for projects like this. This here, this will do. I really need to get this out of the way. There you go, nice little clean cut. Boom. Okay, let's check it. Good to go. We just need enough room to get this bracket in here the caliper. And I made the mistake of mounting it like this before because it seems to make more sense, but it actually mounts this way. And we take our screws into the back side, our bolts, the back side here, and our bracket mounter in place. I found that it's better to put the rotor and caliper on get this all sort of loosely fit and in place before I mess with the brake line, even though it would be easier to do the brake line now. I feel like I lose, make, make, a, make less of a mess doing it that way. So here's the right front rotor. Be careful with your threads here on our wheel studs. And there's guides. There's a certain way that this goes on or it'll just fit where these centering pins kind of line up. We take our hex bolts and just lock it in place. Boom. It's as simple as that. And you can tell the front rotors because you can see the, you can see the hat mounting bolts from the front side where on the rear rotors, they're on the back side. Of course, you can just hold them up next to each other. <laughs> the fronts are a little bigger, 15 millimeters bigger than the, yeah, 15 millimeters bigger than the rears. Okay, there's our rotor. Let's turn it again. I'm gonna pull our, our thing out so I don't forget. I'm gonna take our caliper first. Need to put the pads all the way back. So you need to make sure the pads are seated up against the pistons. Pistons should be all the way open because we don't have any fluid in here. 
Make sure not to chip the pads. Get our caliper mounted in place. And you can always tell which rotor's which. These obviously would be pointing up. I think these are 10 millimeter. I'm gonna just loosely mount these. I hope I don't forget later on. Okay, there's that. Let's put a brake line on. So this one's a little harder. It's gonna be a little harder for me to show you, but there's two washers. One on each goes on each side. And I did it backwards. Just go like this. One on each side. This screws into the back middle of the rotor. I'll get in here and show this to you once I'm complete. I keep saying rotor and caliper incorrectly, but you know what I mean. And that goes in place there. This is gonna be routed around through here. Always have some paper towels handy because you're gonna be dripping fluid all over the place. Make sure you can reach both spots. Now there's a 12 millimeter, no, 11 millimeter on top. So I'm gonna use my flare nut wrench. And then it's 14 on the bottom, I believe. There's 11, 14. Ah, there we go. Ready, tidy, lefty, loosey, Maddie. Okay. So the top nut, the top flare nut spins. Well, I guess it's not a flare nut, but you know what I mean. So then I just grab a little 11, a little short handled 11. It turns like a hundred times. You're leaking brake fluid everywhere. So you wanna do this in somewhat timely fashion. Yeah, so I just torqued all these down to, I guess it is 125 newton meters. I think it called for 150. So I got it to 100 foot pounds on the back. This part of the bracket, I'm gonna tighten these down to about 75 foot pounds. Let's see what that feels like. I don't wanna go that tight. It is aluminum. Let's go down to uh, about 60 foot pounds. And you can just tell when it feels good. Okay, front brake is done. I just want to double check this. Make sure this is good and tight. <clears throat> We're good. Nice. Let's do the rear. All right, let's deal with the rear. The rear is about the same with the exception of the brake line is shorter, but the reaching it is a little bit more difficult. These are a bit tighter on the hub, so you gotta be careful not to... Oh, you know what I forgot to do up front? We'll fix that in a minute. Let me hang that down so I don't forget. I forgot to in the front, I have to terminate the brake wear indicator. This side doesn't have it. I had to do it on the, the back side on the other side of the car. All right, so let me get... We'll take our brake line off first. We'll pop this off. Take the take the pad and, and main part of the caliper off. We'll take the brake off or the uh, the plate off. First, let's pull our little plugs off. Let me see if clockwise is this way. So I need to go up. Oh yeah, it's definitely up. <sighs> that hurt. That's what we like to call the blood hand. Come on. Gee whiz. Why do they thread these so long on these stupid, crappy stainless lines? There's no reason for a freaking 20 turns. The Brembo's turn like once. There we go. Jeez. Thing is like 25 millimeters long. Brake line is off. Pull this goofy thing off. Forgot, I didn't take the uh, bolts out. Same size. Let's do this. 
So the e-brake on these cars, you'll see it here in a minute, but there's another separate hydraulic line that we don't have to worry about in this install. There we go. Bro, push out the rest of the brake fluid. Need to break these loose. Need more leverage. <clears throat> Got it. Dang it. So this one, I'm actually gonna mess with the brake line before I put the, so I'm gonna take the, rot the rotor off, do the brake line, even though it's gonna drip all over the place. Then put the rest of the brake together. So these are a 16 mil. Okay, let's take the rotor off. This one's bigger. I think this was a six millimeter. Yep, spoke too soon about these things. There's one, <clears throat> two, go so I'm gonna cut this first it'll give me more room to work just kind of hold that up in place get an idea where to cut it go I'm guaranteed to cut my arm off Okay, so I need an 11 and a 14. So I'm gonna remove this brake line completely. Put the new one on. Before I put the brake all together and then did this. It was nearly impossible to reach back here. Now we have to turn this a thousand times to get it off. So here's our e-brake little internal hub type e-brake which makes it so that you can easily change out rotors on these cars which are rotors and calipers not rotors but calipers turn this one eighth at a time boom there's the brake line off here goes our new brake line Let's putting that on this is the hard part. I think I got it. This is way easier doing it this way than we did it before. I try to do this with the brake in the way. <clears throat> Boom. I can kind of elevate that. Keep it from dripping everywhere. Just tuck it in here. Okay. I'm going to swap my gloves out now that the mess real messy part is done. Let's put our bracket on. This is why I should wait and not be so impatient. I really should have a cameraman for this. Every day is a day that I like to do stuff. So I need a, uh, I need a 24 hour a day on call camera person. Maybe someday. These aluminum brackets are machined so nicely. It's just super clean. So you can see how to cut this. It's really not, you don't really need any kind of template or anything. You just kind of hold it up, eyeball it, and cut it. And before we put the rotor on, this needs to be pushed back, bent back out of place. Otherwise it's gonna hit the back of the rotor. So be careful with this so you don't wanna jack up the threads on the wheel studs kind of torn on studs or bolts. Some days I like the wheel bolts better, some days I like the wheel studs better. So again, these little swoopies on the Type 3 rotors, they are directional. So you need to make sure you put it on correctly. Okay. All right, so here's our fitting that needs to go in the back of the rotor. Back of the rotor. Caliper, jeez. This in place. Make sure our pads are 
pushed up against. I don't want to chip my pad. Uh, these have black bolts in the back. A little bit longer on the fronts, I think. Maybe someone in the comments could explain, you know, the idea why is the why is the caliper on the front side of the rotor in the rear and on the back side of the rotor in the front? Why is it set up that way? Why is it designed that way? Be interested in being educated on that. And as you might imagine, being this is obsessed garage, we're gonna coat these, this and this here. As soon as I hook up the brake line, and torque this down. Oh, and go over there and I gotta terminate whatever you call that thing. The wear sensor. So these these don't aftermarket don't have a wear sensor. So we'd get a brake light inside the car. Sorry, I'm not doing a good job showing you this, but there's just no way to get the camera in here. Got brake fluid all over me. Tighten this down. I don't think it's 14, I think it's 12. No, it's a 13. Brake line's nice and tight. Okay, there we go. Nicely done. I think I can now ditch the gloves. My favorite part. I should have left them on for one more minute. Ugh. Get this out of here. All right, let's torque these back bolts. Again, I'm torquing these to about 125 newton meters, which is like 100 foot pounds. And make sure that I pull this off the rotor. It's not touching, so I can spin freely without touching anything. And the brake fluid's leaking. Torque these to about 60 foot pounds. Okay, it's done. Brake line looks great. Okay, let's go terminate the front and then we'll coat these. Okay, so here's what I'm doing here. This doesn't have to be anything special here. Show you what I'm talking about. So this is the wear indicator, which doesn't fit on the aftermarket brakes. And so what I'm doing is cutting. You can always replace this anyway if you needed to. I cut that off. Throw it aside. Cut this a little shorter. Take this. So basically we just wanna connect the two wires. And this isn't really anything critical. So all I'm gonna do is take a little wire connector. You could solder these if you really wanted to. I'm gonna take a butt connector like this. Crimp it on. I'm gonna cut this in half because I don't need the other half. Tape this just to keep any water out. Tape it just a little goofy, but you get the idea. It's not a big deal. And then I'm going to take a piece of this heat shrink. Put that over top of there. Just shrink this on. Real simple. I'm sure you could do a, some of you guys could do a better job, but. This gets the job done. So there we go. I'm gonna zip tie that back here somewhere cleanly. All right, since the brakes are done, I'm gonna get them nice and cleaned up to coat. Since we got them here brand new, fresh and clean, we might as well put a couple of coats of uh, something on them make them easier to clean in the future. I'm gonna do the hats, the rotor hats as well. I guess it really won't be me that ends up with much brake dust, it'll be the next person. If you're not familiar, I'm uh, giving this car away 
And by giving away, I mean I'm selling a bunch of t-shirts and access to my membership program. So go to obsessgarage.com, you'll see 1M giveaway. So go check that out if you're interested in winning this car. It's really turned out to be pretty sick. So get that all prepped and ready to go and do the same thing to the rear. Then we're gonna put crystal serum light on here. We'll let that cure. And then uh, tomorrow morning I'll come in and throw a coat of EXO over top while we're, while we're getting ready to bleed them. And then we'll have to bed them. All right, so cleaned up. Okay, so I've got a half or three quarters of an empty bottle of CSL, still looks good. I think this was left over from Bryce's Miata. So I've done my wheels, done now all these brake calipers, rotor hats here. This is just a piece of a uh, CarPro suede towel that I tore apart. And we're gonna hit the hats here, keeping them looking nice, clean. And we'll do the actual caliper surface as well. I'll let this cure for probably 24 hours or so. It's the nice thing about having a few cars is that, like I did, I did the passenger side of the vehicle yesterday. I'll finish up the driver's side today, and then we'll bleed them tomorrow, probably bed them Saturday. I don't have to stress out trying to get it all done in a few hours. It's a better way to live, I'll tell you what. At least I think it's a better way to live. Let's call it a fortunate way to live. Man, I'm pumped to see what these feel like, these giant brakes feel like on this little car. It's gonna be awesome, I think. So basically by the time you put that on, I'm ready to remove it from the hat. Only one layer of CSL, and then you can put a couple layers of XO on if you want, which I might as well, certainly can't hurt. But I've come to like using the CSL on these. Who knows how long this will hold up with the high heat, but it seems to hold up well on the, on the caliper. I don't know about that. I've never done the rotor hats before, so we just did those for the first time. I figure, let's give it a whirl. I've just found that the dedicated wheel coatings don't do as well for me as the regular paint coatings, the ones that are designed for the paint on the car. So I've kind of given up on the C5 and Gion rim and Kamikaze stance and Everybody has them. And just use whatever leftover I have from the rest of the car. Okay, let's do the same thing to the rear and I guess I'll, I'll see you tomorrow. So that's how you install brakes. Hopefully I fix the rub. Yeah, it's coming together. Man, the front lip's coming. I hope I get the center console on the headlights soon. So at least I can enjoy them for a little while. I'll also wipe this down with some uh, with some brake cleaner on a paper towel, or, or or actually probably this towel that I'll be throwing away, and then uh, then we'll have to bed them. So I'll see you tomorrow for some bleeding. All right. So I couldn't capture because Bryce wasn't here, and I couldn't capture some of the particulars. So I wanted to we grab the gimbal and the other Sony. And uh, I'm going to show you kind of all the details of what, what the setup looks like. So here's the back side of the brake. So these were the two, two, these are the two uh, caliper mounting bolts. These I torqued to, uh, to s what did I do, 65 foot-pounds. I made up my own torque specs. That's what felt good. Uh, and then on the very back side here, so here are our actual brackets. So, so here's our bracket, our aluminum bracket. And so we have our two mounting points. These, I'm, these I torqued to 100 foot-pounds. 
So those are the two uh, two connections there that hold the, the caliper bracket on. So that's really all that all that needs to be done, or those two things. So here's our here's our brake line connection. Uh, so you have a washer on either side, and you torque that down. I don't know what the torque spec is, but I made something up. And then here's where I tied my uh, the wear sensor that I spliced in. Just basically made a made a or shorted it out, if you will, by connecting the two ends together. Uh, and then the brake line, so the brake, brake line runs up, so there's a rubber grommet that you, you couldn't see me messing with. So brake line grommet, and the brake line runs up into this section here. Get it from this angle. So this is where, this is that top nut that I was messing with, getting the the, the brake line situated so that has to be torqued and then of course on the on the rotor here we have these two the two bolts that mount and that's really it but look how how clean that thing looks looks so good so that's the front these you don't need to mess with these in fact it tells you not to not to touch them not to mess with any of those so you get a good view of what the AST suspension looks like. So you can see my sway bar is mount to where the sway bar is at stiffest point. There's our AST short end links and then the AST coilover setup. There. So let's look at the rear. Same identical setup, just the calipers on the opposite, opposite end of the rotor. So we have our two mounting points for the rotor and then you have our caliper bolts which I torqued to 65 foot-pounds and on the back side let's come up under here so you can see the brake line is a lot shorter it's a lot shorter on the on the rear and it goes directly in a little different type of type of mount and then we have our two two 16 millimeter caliper bracket mounts and then on both the front and the rear you really need to pull back so I had to cut the dust boot and pull it back so that it doesn't contact so I just yanked on that just to create a little separation a little gap there and that's the brake system I'm gonna clean this up here got a little brake fluid left over all right so time to bleed them do you want to pump it pump 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 and, and hold, hold and you'll tell and me when to release go all the way to the floor and hold it there yeah, now you'll don't tell me. Right no, not like that. I didn't say pump. Oh. <laughs> what do you want? Go ahead and pump. One, two, Keep pumping. three, Keep pumping. four, five. Okay, hold. Holding. Here it comes. Not okay, good. pump. One. There. Okay, hold. Holding. What do you want me to do? You can start pumping. Hold. Hold. Look at all that coming out of there. The other one's gonna be even worse. Pump. Hold. Pump. Hold. Okay, we're done for first round. Ten times. Hold. Okay, that way you're left in that one. Hold. You want me to pack it up? I'll pack it up. Come on. Ten times. Hold. Okay, we're done. 
Boom. Time to put the wheels on. Let's see if I can get through this without opening another bottle. Go. That. Put it on, wipe it off. That's the way I do it. I think this will make a big difference coating the hat here. Keep it clean. So that's how we do the XO. Let's put the rear wheel on. I can't wait to get this outside and see what it looks like. It's amazing how light these are, even with the tires. It's a little tighter on these hubs. Oh shoot, I just pushed the whole car. Okay, we're good. They like slid on these pads, they like... Kind of like a little they just heart moved. attack there for a second. No, I just didn't want to push it too far. Giveaway. Give over. <laughs> Refund. Yeah, sorry folks, but uh, we dropped and it would knock that whole shelf over and that would be, that would be, that'd be good. At least now I know I can just move the car over if I want to. Those jack pads slide right on the, look at that. Yeah. Looks even better when we get them bedded. Boom. One last wheel. Just kind of hoping the front lip would be here today while I have it on the lift, but it never works out that way. Yep. Pull that uh, e-brake before, before it rolls forward. I don't have any gear, you'd be psyched. It's a little anticlimactic because I already have the Brembo's on the M3, but it would be cool. I kind of wanted the gray ones, but the gray had red lettering, so that didn't work. Yeah, that looks so cool. These darn HREs have such a huge dish inside there that the brakes don't look quite as big as they actually are. I need to get a big, uh, big white vinyl sticker that says uh, 1M giveaway, Obsessed Garage, like and subscribe. And get t-shirts, like and subscribe, Obsessed Garage YouTube. Make everyone here wear a t-shirt every day. Yeah. <laughs> See if we get a rub. Ah! Not that bad though, let me see. It's just a baby rub. All right, well, so much for clean 1M, it's about to rain. Uh, anyway, I'm gonna bre I'll bed the brakes tomorrow. I'm gonna try to capture some footage of that, so there may or may not be a video, depending on how that turned out. Uh, but I'm gonna bed the brakes tomorrow, and I'll be sure to update you more. Uh, I already have these on the M3, they're amazing. They, it, they feel better streetably than stock, uh, but they obviously stop much better. And then if I were to go to a track, which I'm not going to, uh, they, would, uh, they wouldn't they would fade as quickly, if at all. So anyway, great project. I'm pumped that I did it myself this time. And uh, yeah, everything's good. So thanks for watching. 1M giveaway, go to obsessgarage.com. Uh, that goes from uh, July 3rd through August 31st, theoretically. So this car is going to somebody, so I'm going to go enjoy it while I can uh, before I have to give it to somebody else. Anyway, thanks for watching. As always, stay tuned for more crazy. Next project, front lip.